Mr. Fussy was fussy about everything. Absolutely everything had to be neat and tidy and in its proper place. Mr. Fussy spent all day and every day rearranging his furniture and making sure that the flowers grew in a straight line in his garden and trying to find specks of dust where there couldn't possibly be specks of dust because he spent all his time making sure that there weren't any specks of dust. One fine morning, Mr. Fussy was having breakfast. He was very fussy about what he ate. He opened the marmalade pot. Oh, he exclaimed, it's got bits in it. And he spent the rest of the morning separating the bits from the marmalade. Oh, if you prefer the marmalade from the bits. Fussy old fuss pot, people used to call him. Then Mr. Fussy went out into his garden and he spent the rest of the day straightening out all the blades of grass on his lawn. Fussy old fuss pot. That evening, Mr. Fussy was in his kitchen, ironing his shoelaces, when he heard a crash outside. <gasps> What's to do? He murmured to himself. And hurried outside to investigate. There, with a broken garden gate in one hand, and an old battered suitcase in the other, and a sheepish grin on his face, stood an untidy person, Mr. Clumsy. Whoops, he said, holding up the garden gate. It came off in me hand. Who, spluttered Mr. Fussy, looking in horror at his garden gate, are you? Oh, I'm, I'm Mr. Clumsy, replied the untidy person, grinning. And he stepped forward to shake Mr. Fussy's hand. He tripped over and fell on the lawn. My grass, cried Mr. Fussy. My straight grass. You, you bent it. And he got down on his hands and knees and started straightening the grass. But who are you? He asked over his shoulder. And why are you here? Oh, I'm your cousin, Blow, replied Mr. Clumsy. Your long-lost cousin from Australia. I've come to visit. If you look hard, there is a certain family likeness between them, isn't there? Well, aren't you pleased to see me? Continued Mr. Clumsy cheerfully, knocking over a flower or two as he got up. Picked up his suitcase, knocking over another flower or two, or three. Mr. Fussy quite obviously wasn't pleased to see him. Oh, you'd better come in, he muttered. I say, remarked Mr. Clumsy, looking through the front door of Mr. Fussy's house. I say, what a neat little place you got here. And he stepped inside, tripped over his shoelaces. He often does. Knocked over a chair, dropped his suitcase, and fell in an untidy heap on the floor. Whoops, he said. Mr. Fussy shut his eyes and heaved a sigh and groaned silently to himself. Later that evening, after Mr. Fussy had cooked them a meal, and after Mr. Clumsy had helped with the washing up, two broken plates, they sat down to talk. Mr. Fussy sat, as he always did, in a neat and tidy fashion. Mr. Clumsy sat, as he always did, in a not-so-neat and tidy fashion. How long are you staying? asked Mr. Fussy. Oh, I don't know, grinned Mr. Clumsy. A few days, a week, a year, haven't decided. Mr. Fussy groaned, another long, silent groan to himself. And they went to bed. When he woke in the morning, Mr. Fussy jumped out of bed and went into his bathroom. Oh, oh no, he gasped. Oh no! Oh yes. Mr. Clumsy had been there before him. The towels lay in a heap on the floor. The bath was full of water. There were pools of water all over the bathroom floor. Half a tube of toothpaste had been squeezed out onto the mirror. What a mess! Mr. Fussy made it all neat and tidy as quick as he could. Then he hurried downstairs. Morning, said his cousin cheerfully. I've cooked your breakfast. Sit down. There was an awful mess everywhere. There we are. Breakfast, said Mr. Clumsy, carrying a plate of fried eggs, broken fried eggs, towards the table. And then he tripped over those shoelaces of his, and then the eggs flew through the air, and they landed all over Mr. Fussy. Sticky, greasy, yellow, fried eggs. Whoops, said Mr. Clumsy. After a week, Mr. Fussy's house didn't look like Mr. Fussy's house anymore. Don't you agree? But after two weeks, Mr. Clumsy decided to move on. 
Oh, thanks for having me, sport, he said to Mr. Fussy. It was very nice to see you, replied Mr. Fussy politely. What he was thinking was not so polite. It's very nice to see you going, was what he was thinking. Well, cheerio, said Mr. Clumsy. And off he went with his battered old suitcase. Goodbye, thought Mr. Fussy, really meaning good riddance. Then Mr. Fussy fussed round his house as he'd never fussed before, fussy old fusspot. That evening, Mr. Fussy was in his kitchen, polishing an egg, and he heard a crash outside. <laughs> oh, no, he groaned. Oh, not Mr. Clumsy back again. It can't be. It mustn't be. It isn't. And it wasn't. It was somebody else. Somebody who just walked straight through Mr. Fussy's garden gate. Somebody who can't help having little accidents. Somebody you may have met before. Ah. Hello, smiled Mr. Bump. I've come to visit. Ah, I thought, thought I'd bump into you again sometime. Bump, <laughs> bump into you. <laughs> Thank you.